Hello and welcome to another episode of Learning with Kai, where Kai, you know, talks to industry experts uh, around the globe uh, and and learn. And I'm taking you with me. And today I am super happy to have Nick uh, Rozaev. Rozaev? How do you, yep, how do you right. say it, Nick? Uh, Rozaev. Rozaev. And he yeah. is <laughs> with uh, Navigin. And Navigin are making indoor navigation and indoor um what do you call it uh, positioning yeah yeah uh systems and they're they're really amazing and you know we're having some talks uh, graph metrics are having some talks with them and seeing if if maybe we can do some collaboration on some of the projects we have and we thought well let's uh, sh you know show you guys what the uh, navigin is doing uh nick i don't have much eye on you uh i i do know you speak chinese i'm not sure yeah. how it relates but um uh, welcome welcome nick yeah thank you for having me kai uh, i'm really excited to be here and yeah it's uh, uh it's great that today we can actually focus on uh talk about indoor positioning and uh, not in a commercial way or but in rather educational so, yeah uh, it's pretty cool and uh well just Actually, before, well, what very quickly, what is indoor uh, navigation and what is indoor positioning? It's very quick uh, before we go. Of course, we're going to go deep. We're going to do a demo. We're going to have, have fun here, but just very quick. What is that? Uh, sure. So, uh, so what indoor, what indoor navigation is, is basically imagine you're imagine the Google Maps yeah, and where you are, you, what's something you're used to, to have outdoor, but now we're taking that to the indoor environment. Yeah, and the uh, indoor navigation achieved with the basically indoor positioning. However, indoor positioning will be a, uh, it's a vast topic because not only can you do uh, can you do navigation, but you can also track your assets. You can also improve safety. Uh, I think we'll talk about that as well. So uh, there are numerous epic applications, and yeah, in a brief, yeah, that's uh, that will be. Yeah, yeah, that's that's great, and that really. Uh goes really well along with what we're trying to do with uh, in graph metrics. So uh, again, that's why maybe we're looking for some kind of collaboration in the future. Very yeah. excited. OK, but before we go into that, uh, I, I didn't have a, a buy on you, but uh, yeah, uh, yeah. why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself now before you go about, you know, your sort of uh, business credentials. Let me ask you when, you know, when you were let's say 10 years old. Mm -hmm. Can you take yourself back to that? And, and, and my question to you is at that time, uh, was there any, any uh, influence uh, or, or like a person that had a, an influence you, uh, on you? It could be like your, your, your mother, your father, it could be a, a teacher or some, somebody. Uh, was there somebody at that time that sort of moved you in some way or another? Uh, yeah, definitely. I think uh, the first person who moved me was, uh, in a way, to, to, do, to work on myself or explore new stuff was my uh, grandfather. Oh. Uh, and he was actually a pretty smart guy. Uh, he, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so uh, I'm coming from the, a rather small city. However, the city is surrounded with uh, numerous research institutes. So where yeah the uh, he was actually uh, I would say was a computer scientist yeah and so but when I was ten years old of course it was difficult for me to understand when he was talking about his work yeah and he could do that he could do the work, talk for hours but uh, what we could do together is play chess yeah and the way he played chess yeah of course uh, the, that inspired me to. <laughs> Yeah, by constantly losing to him, yeah, that inspired me to <laughs> to actually um, do some uh, understand that you you know by when you're ten years old you don't quite have this uh, uh, understanding of uh, the uh, whether you are uh, smart or maybe whether you know a lot or don't you just you are just ten years old and you walk around and you play uh, you go to school yeah but then he really made me realize that it's important to uh, learn yeah because he. You, it was important for me to understand that where are two people sitting, yeah, uh, 
uh, and on the opposite of each other. And but he plays better. So why he plays better? Because definitely he knows more. Uh, he has more experience. So I want to to, to do that as well. Uh, yeah. And then uh, yeah, that I mean may, I think he inspired my curiosity towards uh, towards uh, new things. So um, you know what what we should do is we should play a. Uh... A game of chess afterwards, you know. Offline, yeah, definitely, definitely. And, uh, I, 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 yeah. and then you can humble me a little bit, and then you know I will hopefully be inspired to <laughs> to learn more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd love that. But yeah, I, I, yeah, you know, since then I actually it's not like I play a lot, uh, a lot of chess. But yeah, it's still it's it's funny to play to play a game. Yeah. And what city friend. was that? What what country? What city were you growing up in? Yeah, I was uh, was actually grown up in Russia, so it is a city near Moscow, uh, and uh, in Russia we call those uh, like uh, uh, well, I won't, won't say that in Russian, but that would be like a scientific city or you know, scientific town. Uh -huh. Yeah, and they yeah we had a lot of so and you see when um, back in the day the idea was they built all those uh, re research centers etc. and of course they needed scientists to actually work there. Uh, to, and to do, to do research. It's the yeah. thing. So now yeah. we got the centers. Where are the scientists? Yeah, yeah where are the people? Yeah, <laughs> yeah in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, so they actually had to uh, attract people from Moscow, from Saint Petersburg, from uh, and from uh, from Ukraine, etc., to actually go there. Yeah, and live there and uh, and work there. And of course, when you go to from say Moscow, you go to a smaller city where there are no at most basically no cafes or cinemas etc it's difficult to attack them so they decided to build a really nice city yeah a really comfortable one around the forests lakes infrastructure and all and yeah they did this and it turned out to be a really good town yeah, with a lot of smart people yeah <laughs> sometimes yeah. when people think about russia also back then right it's, it's you know it's some years ago um, that's not what people are imagining you know building a nice city with lakes and cinemas yeah. and cafes and you know to attract the smart scientists this sounds like you know silicon valley kind of thing okay that's great thank you um uh, so that means you also speak uh, russian russian and chinese and english and english you don't yeah, you can't yeah. fool me okay <laughs> okay great and um uh thank you thank you and uh and then, and then, uh, what about uh, when did you get interested in in technology? Uh, you're, you're also in business, you know. You're not technologist as such. You're mm -hmm. business person in technology, kind of like me. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So the so long story short, when I was, I actually went to study the uh, to get my bachelor's degree in the Oriental studies. Or Asian studies. Is that called. where the Chinese comes in? Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, uh, I think on the uh, I think on the third year of my studies, I realized that the uh, you see you still have teachers. Not you don't have native speakers. Almost there were quite quite little uh, number of small number of native speakers teaching you the Chinese. So and then by that moment, you realize that actually you need to go there to live there and to. To talk to the people, yeah, because that would be the biggest boost you might get uh, in the learning of the, not only the language but the culture, how people live there. And of course, it was the uh, mind blowing experience for me because I went there for to live there for one year. Where, where is and, there again? Maybe you said it. Maybe I missed. Oh, it. I went to China. Yeah, I went to where China. China? For one year. China is uh, big. Huh? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. First, I went to Shanghai, yeah, and then I went to a beautiful city called uh, Salmon. Uh, Salmon, yeah, and it's uh, so. If you're thinking about going to China, that's the place you should go. It's a beautiful, warm city uh, near the sea. Uh, it's a coastal city, yes. So it's really beautiful. And there, I lived for one year, interning, studying the uh, language. Uh, and then it's actually, you see, when I was walking there around the shopping malls, and you see there was like this uh, e-commerce boom uh, back then. It was uh, 2017 I think and um, I just saw this cool tech where you see uh, when you enter the uh, it was called digital store when you uh, when you enter and you have a say so you receive a notification on your phone saying that like you have arrived and there are any kind of promos 
uh, for you, then you actually enter the, um, the store and you see a smart mirror and then you see all this, uh, those, you know, uh, the uh, assistance with the tablets, etc. It's so digitized and I got really interested, interested into that. And yeah, started to looking into uh, into this type of stuff in retail, or smart retail, looking looking forward. And then when I came back, I read about this uh, company, yeah, called Nevagin, and those guys were actually doing something pretty much similar. And what I did was uh, I uh, wrote, wrote an email to the uh, our chief commercial officer, saying that guys, I just they came from back from China, and what you are doing is actually better than what they, they have there, and I would like to work for you. And yeah, and here I am. <laughs> That's great. Now, uh, just for a little controversy, just for fun. So you know, when people think about China, and then you say, yeah, you walk in the uh, in the store, and you get like sales pitch for that store on your phone so but then so that's like a commercial side and I, I think that's the side that the western europe is kind of looking forward to but but then when you think about china and tracking uh people start thinking about some other kind of tracking right oh yeah, yeah you know yeah. so uh any did you experience was that too you know did you see or experience or have any insight into to that uh, now keep it short i mean this is obviously not what you are about and just for curi well, curiosity yeah there it's you know, what the first thing you notice there if you come if you're coming from europe to china the, the number of uh, uh of cameras on the streets yeah everywhere every corner yeah. uh yeah and uh that would be the yeah and those most of those cameras i think by now at least most of them in the big cities they are those are smart cameras yeah which can also uh, yeah, uh, with the facial recognition and, and all that. So uh, that's the first thing you notice. Yeah, you, you and the, you see, and the, the, what I also noticed, I have not seen any, uh, I don't know, any fights or people doing anything in a way, doing anything to, I don't know, uh, arguing yeah. loudly. Yeah, because if they break the law, they, the police will immediately find them because the, the cameras are everywhere. And right. another interesting thing that I noticed, I was driving in a bus somewhere, maybe it was in uh, in Guangzhou or Hangzhou, I don't remember. Those are two big cities, yeah, and you get on the screen, uh, you saw, I saw a, a picture of a man who uh, who was, uh, who committed some kind of crime, and the police was saying, like, guys, if you saw him, yeah, it was police report, yeah. yeah. I, it's just, I haven't seen that neither in Europe nor in Russia, so uh, it was something. I, I think um, if you bring bring this back to like uh, you know the Western world, um, the we don't have that. But what we have, which I think is terrible, yeah. and that is heavy censoring, you know, led by the 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 big tech companies and uh, and and the media, uh, and it's kind of a similar thing. Like you said, you haven't seen people arguing on the street it's a good thing right that they don't at least physically argue but yeah. i think arguments are actually super healthy especially if you have uh, dominant uh, you know powerful forces like governments and big corporations and uh, if you can't argue against them i think it's uh, devastating for for the country for creativity yeah. and and but i think that's happening right now on a very big scale in, in the West, where even powerful people like uh, Donald Trump get censored, uh, imagine what they do with everybody else who has no real voice compared to him. There's a lot of censoring. Okay. Uh, and another thought I got was actually here in Norway, you know, the, the privacy rights are very strong and, and there's all kinds of laws against cameras. But in property, in Norway, they don't have cameras like around the shopping centers and, you know, businesses. Mm -hmm. What they have is light sensors. Oh. <laughs> so it's the exact same thing. But so they install all of these light sensors and that way, you know, they get away with it somehow. So there's uh, there's a lot of light sensors. We don't have lots of cameras, but we have a lot of light sensors. <laughs> it's a bad thing. OK, so. Uh, Let's um, let's uh, move over to uh, uh, Navigin. 
so what do you do yeah uh, uh so uh what navigin does is uh we do two things the first one would be the uh our sdk yeah, to uh, into that can be integrated inside any application and uh, to provide indoor navigation inside any venue yeah inside any building yeah so basically that would be the google maps story however inside your building or warehouse or shopping mall yeah uh, or say hospital and the second one which i think we'll talk a bit more about is the asset tracking platform uh, which basically unites uh, the all the existing technologies for indoor positioning under one roof and provides seamless positioning uh, there. Uh, so the yeah, that yeah. So start. let's let's start with uh, indoor navigation. Mm -hmm. um, so what's that used for? Like, if I'm in a shopping mall or an hospital, you choose. <laughs> like, give me an example of how how what would I use that for? Yeah, uh, so imagine, so for instance, uh, an example from a retail store. So imagine yeah. you are driving from work on a bus and uh, uh, so you have you have in mind, uh, you have a list of groceries in mind. So you open an application, you type this list, then you enter the retail store and there you have a... Yes, there you, I'm yeah, imagining. There you, yeah, there you on have the bus. A, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, there you have a, a, once you enter the grocery store, you have a smart card with a tablet on it. Yeah? So what you do is uh, you sync your list on the phone with a, uh, with a smart card, yeah, with a tablet on, on a card. Yeah, and you have this list of uh, uh, groceries on, on the card now. You take the card and the card, what card does is it builds you the route to all the required, uh, to your, according to your grocery list. Yeah, and... Uh, uh, yeah, that would be the user experience part. What you, what another thing right. is, with the very same smart card. So you take this card, and uh, say you do not really know what you would like to eat. However, you have a list of dishes there on a tablet. Yeah. So for instance, that could be barbecue. Yeah. And you press on it, and it breaks it down into the uh, gross uh, into the gro uh, groceries list and takes around the uh, the uh, uh, the store. Yeah. Right. where you can collect your item and moreover so for instance uh it will also be sending you like notifications for instance if you are near the mm, aisle with a uh, uh, say uh, drinks yeah uh, like uh, you would get might get notifications say if you get one caller you get the second one with a 10 percent off yeah and the only way for the grocery store to let you know about that is actually have some kind of sign with the lights and all and that is not guaranteed that you'll actually see it yeah? so that would also be the case to be notified about uh, additional uh, promos yeah? and navigin so what navigin software does it may, it helps this soft smart card navigate or to provide you with the precise indoor position uh, indoor navigation inside the store yeah? that would be the with the retail uh, in the healthcare, for instance, that is, yeah. Uh, yeah, that would be, for instance, the so you have to see, say, a few doctors today, and you have them scheduled, and you know, and it says your first time in the hospital, and the hospital is a ten-story building, for instance, or it is more than say, three uh, three thousand square meters or more. Yeah. 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 So what you do is, it's not just the this application and navigation yeah, here is not just uh, like. Uh, uh, one application for navigation. Usually, how it works is there is a smart hospital application already in place, yeah? and the navigation is just a part of this bigger offering yeah, for the uh, for the client. Yeah, and the idea is that uh, you enter the hospital, and the application will guide you to according to your appointments. Um, and uh, yes, and uh, with the, for instance, uh, the shopping malls. So here, I think it's not a secret. The shopping malls are quietly dying right now. Uh, quite, yeah. And what I mean dying is that less and less people are doing the shopping, uh, uh, especially with the COVID, but also it's happened before that as well. With the, uh, I'm sure, uh, like like anything, what we're seeing is um, a shift. You know, yeah. like the, the, there there's some some move, some change has to happen uh they probably like most businesses know how to survive so they'll probably survive 
but not in its current form. That's just, I don't know, just my guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, exactly, yeah, yeah. It was, that's, that's what I was about to say, that they need to, so the shopping malls currently, they need to figure out a way to make, make sense for people to go there. Yeah? Uh, so that would be a like, customer experience. That should be something more, uh, they might, might be able to get a better deals or anyway. And so they also have to utilize the, uh, the buildings, yeah, the stores have to utilize the uh, the area they are using, yeah. So they, they have to make money per more money per square meter. That's the case for both for the retail and for the shopping malls. And such solutions as say in door navigation or in door position can be a small fraction uh, into achieving this goal. Uh, to, uh, because not only can we do say navigate you at the shopping mall, but also for the what it means for the shopping mall as a business. Is that they can attract you? Uh, the uh, the stores can attract you, uh, and they can also increase uh, uh, your engagement. So, for instance, what we saw with the uh, Smart Card initiative yeah, uh, in in Finland is that uh, actually the average check increased by six percent. So, with the people receiving those notifications, twenty five percent of those were seen. Yeah, that's pretty good engagement uh, yeah, uh, rate and. 5% of people decided to actually buy, yeah, buy the promo, yeah, uh, yeah. and th so overall that, that, that we managed to achieve a 6% uh, average check increase, and that's, I think that's Is this, is this uh, to be more specific, is this a specific uh, mall that you guys worked in, or is it something else? Uh, yeah, it was a supermarket chain in uh, Finland, they're called yeah. Kesko Supermarkets, uh, and yeah, so uh, there's, uh, so 6% Every check increase, yeah, the, the, it's uh, it's huge for the retailers, especially now. Especially now, they are constantly looking for the way to 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 make people, uh, let's say, buy more. Yeah, of course. Um, and so that would be basically what can be achieved with an SDK. Mm. Yeah, and uh, so so mm -hmm. talk, talk to me about that. So so you have an SDK, and then so th that's uh, to integrate with. The, the hospital, the, the mall or the shopping centers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, other offers. So it's, it's like an integrated thing, not an external. Is that how it works? Yeah, yeah, like, because, uh -huh, yeah. Uh, so our idea, well, our business model, yeah, we talk about some, uh, some business stuff here, I guess, uh, is okay. that we do not, yeah, we do not deliver the end solution. Yeah? And what we do, our approach is, yeah, to, is to act through partnerships and uh, in, a majority of the cases, uh, the partner already has is developing some kind of application, and they're saying that guys were missing one puzzle here, one piece. And that would be the navigation, yeah. And uh, what we managed to achieve is that this could be SDK could be integrated with a few lines of code for them, yeah. And uh, great, yeah. No, uh, for us, just uh, keep keep letting us know of business because a lot of our viewers are you know businesses looking to integrate such technologies so we need to n understand the business ah, sense of, of it course. for sure so uh, feel free to to, to talk yeah. about business yeah okay uh, great and uh, so just to clarify so you know indoor navigation is what on a phone or uh, how, how does that oh. navigation get to the the person navigating indoor uh, yeah, so the, uh, yeah, basically the SDK is running on your phone, in the application yeah. on your phone, and it runs offline. Uh, that's also a good part. What you need to do is have a Bluetooth on, and that's it. Yeah, and then you'll have the uh, navigation uh, on the smartphone, and the best part is that not only do we use the Bluetooth signals, yeah, but to uh, provide the positioning, but also the uh internal sensors of your smartphone because smartphone is it's 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 smart not just of course just for fun yeah because there are quite a few additional sensors like gyroscope accelerometer barometer all this helps us to actually improve the position and deliver up to one meter accuracy yeah so uh uh and uh, i think another important thing we kind of i kind of missed and my apologies that for this indoor navigation to work there, there has to be some type of infrastructure inside the building. In, uh, so usually those are the Bluetooth low energy beacons. Uh, they're pretty popular nowadays. Uh, I think quite a few people already have heard of them. 
Uh, and uh, Nevagin's approach here is that we are vendor agnostic in this uh, in this way. And what it means is that we can actually we already have numerous uh, Pickens manufacturers integrated into our solution. So in this case, you can buy any of those recommended vendors, and the navigation will work. Or if you have a preferred vendor, but where we haven't yet integrated it, we can easily do that in a matter of weeks. Yeah. So we do not focus on one vendor, uh, on one uh, beacons manufacturer. What we do is actually we provide the flexibility because you see the beacons prices, prices also vary. And for instance, if we're talking about mm, a, say a venue bigger than like 50,000 square meters, that would be a lot of beacons and the price decrease in them for say a, a $10 difference uh, per beacon would actually be huge for the case. So, um, uh, so you say a lot. I love numbers. Um, how many beacons would you need for what did you say, ten thousand square meter? Yeah. So usually, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty simple math here. Usually, we need about from ten to fifteen beacons per thousand square meters. Okay. Uh, why this gap between ten and five is basically the uh, the topology of the building. Yeah, so for instance, yeah. if there are, so in the shop, with the, uh, the case with shopping malls, there are mostly straight holes there, yeah, so no, no it's, it's not a difficult, uh, the topology of the building is rather straight, yeah, just, you just have uh, straight holes and that's it, yeah, people walk uh, straight in lines, yeah, right. that's it. Right. But if we're talking about offices or, uh, say, um, or airport, airports even, with a lot of open spaces, columns, and uh, uh, in this case, we, we might need uh, to add, to go with 15 beacons per thousand square meters uh, in particular areas. Yeah. And you were talking, you are saying uh, f for this, um, you, you were, uh, you know, you, you, your system work independent of the hardware, of the beacons. Yeah. And if I remember right from talking to you earlier, this is also true for your positioning uh, software, right? That you can, you can, so why don't, why don't you uh, talk about the positioning? Sure. Be a, a, a trans, you know, this is a transfer over from the indoor to the positioning. Yeah. You indoor just, navigation to indoor position. Yeah. You just <laughs> build a perfect bridge. Yeah. Yeah. The bridge. Uh, so, yeah, with the indoor position in our approach is pretty, uh, pretty much the same, but uh, a bit more complex. So uh, to do the, say, for instance, let's say you want to do asset tracking, and uh, Let, let's uh, let's step uh, back. Sorry, um, yeah. let's step back one step. Big picture, okay. indoor positioning. Uh, what what is that for? Because suddenly we have a completely different purpose. Oh, yeah. Right. So let's let's take that back, the step back, and say what what is that for? You know, who is it for? What is it for? What are the benefits? Before we get into how sure. it works and sh showing, we're gonna do, show a little demo of something and yeah. Yeah, uh, sure. So with the indoor position in the uh, the verticals vary quite a lot, and for uh, so for instance, to date we've received requests from uh, from the warehousing uh, industry, from retail from the uh, manufacturing, from the mining, etc. And basically what people would like to do there, what companies would like to do there, there is actually to locate something or someone. All right, Nick, uh, let's see a little demo, can we? What are we yeah, looking at here? What are we looking yeah, at? Guy, sure. So uh, currently you can see that I'm uh, staying in this, standing in this room and we will be doing indoor positioning with the Bluetooth low energy. That's the asset tag, and we okay. have an antenna hanging on the ceiling. So I will just take a few walks around the table, take a seat, uh, move with this asset tag so that you see how everything works. Yeah. So let's go. So moving around the table. It's moving. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, it changes me. So I'll now take a seat. Yep, and I'm on the chair. Now I will move the asset tag across the table. Yeah. No asset tag with me. Now I'll take it back. And yeah, do one more circle around the table. Why don't you leave the room? Yeah, sure, sure. That's 
Yeah, yeah. So and he's back. Yeah, and I'm that's perfect. Back here. Yeah. That's perfect. And uh and then do you have any uh like can you create a report? Um can you can you go back in time and see what happened kind of thing? Yeah, let's see how I moved uh in the last like uh uh in the last few minutes why not yeah. uh let me set up the time it's like two minutes back or something yeah we'll press apply uh, report generated and let's go we'll have to move somewhere over here uh, when we started just a second yeah. yeah the action should be somewhere about now we can slow it down a little bit i see that's the speed Yeah, and we should start right about now. And how many of these uh, tags can you have, like in an office like this? Yeah, here are as many as you want, as many as you want. We are not limited here. So that's me leaving. That's me returning. Yeah, that's the short report. Nice. But yeah, we can uh, travel back in time. No problem there. Yeah, I think that's uh, what I wanted to show you, Kai. Uh, what 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 do you have um, of reports over there? Is that so? Yeah, I mean reports. We can also actually uh, yeah generate a report on my, for instance, uh, how I uh, how I was moving. Yeah, in the last yeah. thirty minutes. Yeah, and we'll see that. Uh, let's do this thirty minutes, but let's say here. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you see that zone number two is the room we're currently uh, we're currently in. And yeah, the system show that I spent seven minutes of my time in this particular room, which is uh, and time of stay equals to 96%. And remember when I moved to the next room, yeah? So the yeah. system also detected that my stay was around four seconds, yeah, which equals to less than a percent of the total t uh, time we are looking at, so. Right, that's excellent. And uh, of course, I'm imagining what we can do with a trend path and then capturing these data as events and correlation and conceptual AI and, you know, creating a lot of useful information out of this. Uh, that's so cool. That's great. Great demo. Thank you very much. You can have the, say, Bluetooth low energy approach. You can have ultra wideband. You can use Wi-Fi. Yeah, you can uh, have ultra, you can use ultrasonic approach. Uh, so there. These are all the the base stations, if you, is that what you call them? Yeah, to, yeah. That that you use to locate some entity, like yeah. a person or a thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah, and currently there are companies uh, which uh, mainly focus on one way uh, uh, of providing that. So it could be, say, they uh, some company might say we are doing Bluetooth low energy in the opposition. That's it. Right. And there might be another company saying we do ultra wideband, and that would be it. Right. So normally you would pick one. You could pick more than one technology. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. To, to identify, but but yeah, yeah. Typically currently, you pick one. Yeah. Currently businesses, yeah, they can companies can decide depending on their needs, uh, yeah. which technology to go with. Because uh, you see the difference between these technologies is also the is the. Uh, difference in the pricing and the accuracy they can they can deliver. So, why don't you do this for me? Uh, you pick uh, two uh, technologies uh, that are popular, that are for, for whatever reason are something people tend to pick, mm -hmm. uh, are different, and tell me what's the you know some of the benefits of one technology and what's some of the benefits of the other. Is that something you could do, or I'm just sure, throwing sure. it at you? Yeah. Sure, right. sure. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, so, for instance, we can talk about uh, Bluetooth uh, low energy equipment with an RS using uh, RS RSSI method. Yeah. yeah it's like the uh, and the second one would be, the, for instance, ultra wideband. Okay. So <clears throat> the so with Bluetooth low energy equipment, yeah, uh, with an RSSI based equipment, Bluetooth low energy. So what you will have is 
the benefits would be the uh, the price. Yeah, uh, it will also be the number of available vendors who can do the uh, who manufacture such equipment. It would also be the uh, uh, the uh, number of um, hardware devices. Yeah. So, for instance, those could be uh, small asset tags, those could be... Uh, uh, you know, it's always fun to show. So, hold it up a little further. So, what's this? This is a, 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 a Bluetooth low energy asset, asset tag. tag. Is that what you yeah. would call it? Yeah. yeah, this one is pretty cool, actually. That's what one of our partners. It's small, it can work uh, from up to like uh, two or three years. Uh, it is... Uh, yeah, and it... Uh, and what does that cost? One one tag like that. So a small a small Bluetooth energy tag would cost around from ten to twenty dollars approximately. Yeah. Yeah. United States dollars. Yeah. And um, yeah. And uh, the when you say it, la it lasts one to two years, that is without before you need to swap the battery. It, it yeah, keeps yeah. lasting, right? It is. Yeah. It's yeah. The battery yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah, so basically those, the structure of those is pretty straightforward. So, I mean, you have the uh, batteries and you uh, have a uh, PLE chip and that's it. Yeah, so the, yeah, the, the, uh, the, the time it will, the time, the timing of the battery would basically depend on the, the life cycle of the battery, but it simply depend on how often you send the, you would like it to send the signals. Yeah. So, the frequency. Uh, you, yeah, the frequency. So, yeah. so you can set the frequency of, you know, according yeah. to your needs. So if something yeah. is more, doesn't move much, uh, you yeah. know, very often, you, you can do it like one every minute. And then if it is yeah. something like a doctor that's moving around in a hospital and you, you can set it to every 10 seconds, is that yeah. how it works? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, or even on every second. Every second. A new, yeah. new location measurement yeah okay and uh now you you said one thing uh you said number of devices in there somewhere uh is that how many numbers it can handle like how many it can track or oh, that as well and also the uh and also so, the does that does that mean that sorry for cutting out there does that mean bluetooth low energy can track more devices than ultra wide Band? No, it's like not the no. more, but I think there is, uh, it's just, I would say, uh, yeah, with some ultra wideband uh, providers, there is a limitation for, as if I'm not mistaken, up to 1000 uh, assets. Yeah, and right. there is a way, I think, to increase the number. Uh, yeah, but we haven't yet had the case with uh, right. over 1000. Yeah. Um, and with the also Bluetooth energy, what I mean is the different. I would say forms of trackers. Yeah, for instance, that is would be also a Bluetooth energy beacon. Yeah, and that's actually so this is cool. another. Hold on, this is an. This is what? This is a beacon. Yeah, beacon, not the asset tag. Right. So this is uh, fastened on the wall or a roof ceiling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, show show the, it. Show it. Hold it yeah. up so we can see the thingy. Yeah, yeah. but it could all. Yeah. So this how it works. Yeah. Uh, uh, and also there are Bluetooth low energy watches, uh, smart watches, and one of them would be, so that's just an example of a device uh, working with uh, supporting Bluetooth and low energy. And as you know, today is like uh, many smart watches support them already, but those are, I would say for the uh, consumers, yeah, for regular people like you and I for the daily objectives. However, there are also cases where we, it's actually, uh, it's possible to do the position and use using those watches as well. So, uh, does it work with the Apple Watch? Do they have it? No, did, did uh, it I mean we had we had we had worked with uh, it was like a more R and D where we used decided to take a look at what we can do with a smart Galaxy Watch. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so does that mean that if if you run this in like a, a hospital? I mean, I don't think you would use this in a in um in a, in a shopping center like hand everyone a watch but if you if, if you're talking like employees like hospitals and nurses 
uh, in a hospital, then everybody could potentially just get a watch so they don't have to have like a tag and, and drag around. So they yeah, get like a, yeah. a work watch that they use when they yeah. work. And whenever they use that, you you get their location. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It, it's, it, it could also be in the form of a card uh, like uh, this one. Yeah. So you just carry it uh, on your neck. Uh, that yeah. uh, would be a, yeah, a card just right uh and yeah so you, we together with your name tag or something you can have that and... yeah 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 one of our yeah. partners uh they even have like uh, uh this card where you can also put, put a photo and uh, the card also has like over here they also have two buttons one button is for the like an sos button and the second one you can actually decide what this button will do so okay. yeah in case of an emergency you simply press the button Nice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, as I think most of that was, or all of that was uh, low energy Bluetooth. What about the, um, the ultra wide band? Why would, so this sounds all great, right? So why would you want ultra wide? There must be some benefits yeah. to, to that over Bluetooth. Yeah. With Bluetooth low energy one, the drawback is the accuracy. So uh, if we're not talking about the, um, yeah, there are like, uh, basically there are two ways to do the position on Bluetooth low energy. The second one, the first one would be RSSI method, which we just talked about. And the second one would be the RSSI, uh, angle of arrival. Uh, uh, so angle of arrival is a different story and we will not be talking about it uh, just to, so that we don't confuse anyone. And with, uh, so with uh, uh, RSSI method, you get five to 10 meters accuracy, you see? Right. So that might not solve all the, all the business objectives. And now, uh, now, if if you have a room, you have the beacons in the room, then you'd know you're in the room, even though there's a, another room two meters away from it. Or would you not know which room? Uh, it depends on the size of the room, mostly. Yeah. yeah, okay. So so help me out. So if you have, um, uh, you know, a, a three meter by five meter room, <laughs> Mm -hmm. And you have another room next to it, three meter by five meter. Could you determine which room you're in? Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Okay. Because yeah. uh, I think that's super useful. Uh, if you couldn't know exactly, you know, if there are three rooms next to each other and you couldn't figure out which room, that would be a disadvantage, mm -hmm. clearly. But yeah, I see. Would, would, but isn't it, if you have a beacon in each room, wouldn't that beacon sort of pick up you're in that room? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. So the dot. So basically, this dot won't be jumping because we can also inside the system, we can draw barriers, and that would mean that if you enter this room, you can jump through the wall. The dot won't jump through the wall because if you see, you'll see that some of the dot position and solutions. And yeah, we also had uh, is that the problem is that the job the, the dot is constantly jumping. It's constantly moving. That's due to the limitations of Bluetooth uh, low energy on using error society okay and and before we go to any demo let's uh let's uh, stick this out so then the benefit of the ultra wide band uh the ultra wide band is basically i would say it's unprecedented accuracy it's uh yeah we, we're talking about so one of our partners they can deliver up to 10 centimeters accuracy that is uh impressive of course and the, so it's a huge difference yeah that's a, yeah it's a huge difference yeah yeah that's true that's true and uh yeah the only the the, the only problem with ultra wide band uh so far in my personal opinion is the price yeah because so what uh, could you give me some example of prices of difference uh, well to just to give you let's say it would uh let's say let's put it this way uh covering say uh, it would cost uh It's uh, one. Uh, it's, it will cost five times more, maybe. Five more times than, more. Yeah, that's five a good. Times, five times more. Four times. And the is this um, what is a is a cost in the beacon or in the tag? Uh, that would be the cost in the beacon. It's mainly the beacon. So, what's the tag cost? Is it similar, like ten, twenty dollars? Yeah, is it uh, like... yeah. It's it's a bit more than that, but just a little bit. The tag is yeah. is actually cheaper. And and what about the size and the practicality of the the, the tag? Uh, like, well, yeah, yeah. With, oh yeah, and with ultra wide band, I think you don't have such flexibility. 
yeah, with the in terms of uh, whether it would be the uh, card or it would be something like that or it would be for instance a uh, smart helmet or it would be a smart board yes yeah, so currently not that many options what's the smart helmet uh, yeah uh, another <laughs> initiative we were running for the production and manufacturing that's the cool part here yeah that's a smart uh, smart helmet uh, yeah. right here it's uh, basically the main part here is uh, you're gonna model. put it on and, and be a little king for us or yeah uh, so <laughs> there we are there the we are. idea is yeah actually it's like a gladiator or something right here yeah. yeah it's cool actually <laughs> uh yeah it's uh, uh, for so my the, entertainment keep it on a little bit just keep it on a little bit okay, i sure. wish i had one i'd put it on if yeah we, we will send i will send you one <laughs> you'll send me one anyway. i'll send you one yeah when is so, your birthday yeah <laughs> uh, so uh so but because this is great because you know for construction and construction sites people are uh, you know uh, required to wear their their helmets obviously for safety uh, so then you just make sure you have the so this is a ultra wide tag no, on top this of one no here this one was using the on the BLE was running on the BLE it's it's a, a bluetooth yeah, yeah but, yeah, but yeah. you could have yeah. the same you could have this in ultra wide is that yeah you can have that in ultra wide as well so this was an initiative that we were running um, so the idea was to uh, <laughs> not to track workers but to uh, notify the shift managers in case there was a problem on the shop floor what i mean is so imagine you have a show uh, imagine you have a floor plan yeah and uh, basically you see your assets moving like forklifts etc but what's uh, who you don't see are, uh, is your workers uh, you don't see them and you only start seeing them when say uh, when say the your employee stopped moving for more than five minutes and you know that he was in a high risk area so in that case, on the on the uh, on the map, you a dot will appear, yeah, and a notification saying that this worker it's not personalized, yeah, it's just a dot. The worker with an ID number twenty five might be in danger. Go and check. Yeah, that was the idea. Mm. Uh, with this, feel, uh, feel so, free to take it off if you want. Yeah, yeah, actually, <laughs> yeah, because when I'm shaking my head, it's about to fall off. <laughs> So uh, let's see some dots on the map yeah. and uh, see see what all that looks like. Yes, we see it. Awesome. Uh, so here's how the uh, Navigin platform. So, huh? so this is uh, Navigin, right? Navigin. And this is uh, tell tell just before you show the dots. What are we looking at? What, so uh, yeah, we're looking at the Navigin tracking platform and developed in-house and currently the dots that are moving are the assets on the shop floor uh, of the factory. Uh, we call it factory 5. Uh, and uh, yeah, the dots are moving in real time and this case was uh, on the Bluetooth low energy. And uh, actually the, here we are in the online tracking and that's uh, as i told you for instance uh here you have your for instance forklifts moving yeah and then you don't see your workers yeah but you start seeing them once there is an, uh, an accident or there is a so possibility that, that, of an accident. Uh, that tag uh 1032 that's a forklift is that what yeah. you're saying yeah, yeah forklift or any type of assets i don't particularly remember what it is but yeah you okay. see the those could be specified you just press an asset and you type something like uh, right because you could basically tag anything you want to tag yeah and then and then you know you say what it is and then it moves around <laughs> if it yeah moves. <laughs> exactly it's yeah. it's good that you said you can tag anything because we, what we've got uh for instance from uh from uh, our customers and just the people i've been talking to is that you can it's there is even a need to track letters sometimes because uh it can take up to one hour to find uh, a ladder and it's not it's not uh the some you know it's and it's the qualified people that are searching for those letters on the shop floor and imagine okay. spending an hour of their time yeah right so and, and this is a big one right so because we're you know it's a fun of this but it's also like the the very practical huge savings that we can accomplish so 
I know, for instance, in hospitals, the, 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 the health personnel there are spending a huge amount of time looking for things. <laughs> You know, if you yeah. if you track a hospital and, and they do and they, you know, they, they do surveys of how much of uh, doctor, nurse, personnel, you know, administration are are how much of their time are they spending to find equipment? That number is um, is like huge, like 30 percent or something like that. I've seen some uh, research on. And so, you know, instead of spending one hour to find that ladder, <laughs> They can now uh, find it right away. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. You know, and, and it's just the moving part, right? And then maybe they use that indoor navigation <laughs> app, and they go go to the ladder, <laughs> find the ladder, and and uh, save. You know, they spend five minutes rather than one hour. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's the case. The only yeah, uh, the only uh, thing here is that, yeah, right, with hospitals, they already know how much time they're spending uh, on, uh, on the search for, searching for assets like wheelchairs, beds, and uh, expensive equipment. Yeah, that's uh, true. I agree. And uh, so, so basically, with this, um, if that's okay, I'll explain, like, what, why we have it, why the online tracking is here and wh why basically you need this. So the, with the online tracking, uh, this one is basically provides you with the visibility into operation. There is basically not that much you can take from here except for the information on where and what your assets and uh, say workers are doing currently. Yeah. And so this is just an, uh, for you to determine what's going on. Yeah, you just open it on your, or you can actually open it not just on your laptop or uh, PC, but on also on your smartphone yeah, and just check what's going on. Yeah. And so for instance, you open the notifications tab and you see what happened in the last hour yeah, on your shop floor. Uh, who moved, if there were any accidents, if there were any idle alerts, well, yeah, like when the equipment was not used for say more than 30 minutes, however, you know at the shift manager that it's actually supposed to be running currently and uh, for instance, the forklift was supposed to be going uh, going 20, working 24-7, but for some reason it's not, Yeah, so maybe there is a problem. Right. Uh, and I think the, uh, actually the best part and the recent update we did was uh, the, uh, the seamless position between outdoor and indoor. And here we added layers. So, for instance, we can switch to the satellite image here. And what you see here is that imagine you had assets moving all right over here. Yeah. And then they enter, they go inside the building, the factory, and then you seamlessly the dot seamlessly appears on the floor plan of the factory of the indoor floor plan. So that's uh, that would be the seamless position in. Uh, between indoor and outdoor, that's something we do as well. So, yep. and um, with a uh, that is also something that our we see that companies are currently searching for. And the case so, would and just, be as uh, well. Huh? Mm -hmm. Just to dream, dream a little bit. Uh, so when we're talking about uh, some integration of this with Graphmetrics uh, TrinPod system, some of what we're dreaming about is uh, being able to answer things like why did that forklift move from outside to inside <laughs> and uh, you know understanding the the why things happen and uh, tracking it not just going back but even again we're dreaming we're not there yet but uh, you know we'll work towards it uh, uh, being able to go forward in time <laughs> yeah that would be amazing but, and i mean there... sorry yeah go ahead no, I'm just saying that yeah, that's we we I think we haven't discussed it like here on camera that yeah with the graph metrics uh, uh, for, uh, features and uh, AI the, and our position and data, the possibilities are actually endless. Yeah, it's like uh, if the, the as you said yeah why it's actually why this asset is actually here and what happened yeah so that it it, 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 it appeared here now uh, for instance if some accident occurred what can we do? to make sure that it doesn't happen next time. Yeah. 
Right. So okay. just uh, to let people understand a little bit. So what we have in, in, in the graph metrics uh, ontology is um, we, we track events. And in an event, we have the, the states coming in, for instance, position, uh, you know, time, time, space, position. And then an event happens and then you get output with new, new time, uh, space, uh, position. And, um, uh, and then you get a series of events uh, that, you know, it, you, you constantly log as, you know, like uh, an event to pick up some, some uh, you know, for the forklift to pick up a load of something uh, because that came in. So you keep, there's events on events and you keep stacking them and you can try to understand, uh, you know, why things are moving, uh, when they're moving, etc. And then... And in addition to that, you get the uh, conceptual AI where it understands more about what everything is. So it will understand what is a forklift? What is a hospital bed? Oh, a hospital bed, it needs cleaning between use, you know, change the sheets, etc. And, uh, you know, why does it need that, etc., uh, etc. Et so, so if you could, uh, you know, map this uh, Navigine information, Navigin, Navigin information, uh, on top of the TrinPod, you get something very powerful, even more powerful. This is already super powerful, obviously. Yeah, yeah, I agree completely. Yeah, that's something we've been uh, dis discussing for a, for a while now. Okay, so what you are seeing now again is the uh, online tracking tool here. Uh, and as I mentioned, the part that we haven't yet covered is the notifications. And you see those appear in real time based on not only the positioning data, but also if we're talking about smart wearables like smartwatches, as we talked before, which have uh, really, really gyroscopes, accelerometers, accelerometers etc., we can also detect a man down alert. So if your employee has fallen, his, his position will appear on the map and you'll be able to assist. Yeah. And of course... Yeah. So now we're talking about uh, security of, of the employees. Yeah. That would be like... Safety. More, yeah. That would be the safety improvement. Yeah. And we, of course, understand, yeah, that it's not, it's not uh, feasible to track employees in real time all the time because... It's basically violating their privacy and may not meet, meet the. Well, we're, we're basically they will. I, I'm I'm not sure that we'll, they will um, face such a change uh, happily. Yeah. However, what right. if you do? Uh, if you do explain that actually there is with this uh, wearable device and the solution uh, with the, the platform, we will be able to decrease incident response time. That's something that they actually they might not mind, but they will embrace. Yeah, because there are accidents happening uh, uh, every time. Uh, so basically every day on the shop floors. So I think, uh, yeah, you, that could actually... Uh, so, so let's talk about uh, different use cases. Uh, yeah. Uh, what, what are some different use cases that you see? I mean, we talked about shopping. We talked about... A hospital mm -hmm. do we have any other use cases uh yeah of course so for instance you can also track the uh say uh, forklifts uh to uh, to basically improve the uh the efficiency and also detect idle alerts so if the forklift is not moving for 10 minutes yeah for instance yeah you and you would like to know that we will we will actually generate uh, a report saying that for instance the uh, vehicle spent 58% uh, of its time in painting area number two yeah? and uh, just 38% in painting number one. So for us, for, us, for you and I, it doesn't, that doesn't really mean anything. However, for the, for the uh, people actually working there, they're, uh, on the shop floor, they will actually know whether it's okay or not, uh, su such a distribution of time in the zones. Right. So uh, they can optimize it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. What about uh, what we haven't talked about? And I know it's been used for this is uh, more like logistics. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, 
uh, I guess forklift is part of logistics maybe, but um, what other sort of logistics logistics uses uh, you guys see? Uh, yeah, so uh, first one would be the pellets tracking. Yeah, that's pretty popular uh, because you see there are like, um, so the pellet has arrived, yeah, and it, it, and to it once it's arrived, it should spend like five minutes in this zone. And then it's, uh, once uh, where there is an, and then it has to be moved to another zone. And so this, uh, each co the whole procedure should not take more than 15 minutes. Yeah? And since you have the movement data, you can actually track how, how much time it takes to, for such an operation. And if there is a bottleneck, you will be actually, you will see, actually see uh, where it's uh, it's happening because, for instance, you see that, for instance, this asset has entered the whole area number one uh, in the at ten twenty six, uh, and uh, uh, basically exited it at ten. It's entered just for two seconds. Yeah, so basically you see how the asset is moving, and you may, may understand where it's spending most. Uh, uh, most of um, uh, the most of its time, basically, and what 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 which zone takes more of your uh, time in operations. Uh, so the another one would be the tracking of forklifts, as I said, and yeah, uh, yeah and uh, I think uh, with the logistics currently, at least at, at least we what we worked with, uh, it uh, would be that you could summarize it for us. For us, it was more. For us, the majority of cases were in uh, currently in manufacturing, and also in the the case I think we an interesting case we had is the tracking of cards. Yeah, and yeah, that I think that would be also the logistics case. So, long story short, there is a big uh, warehouse, and this uh, the main storage unit there is flowers, are flowers. Yeah. Uh, so, and yeah. yeah, and once there is another coming. What's happening is, uh, especially an employee, a, a picker, let's say, goes enters the warehouse. Uh, it's freezing out there, by the way, and and he has to find the right card with the uh, and uh, the right card and deliver it to the let's say where they actually process the order. So and it it took them up to like. 40 minutes to find the right card because imagine there are basically uh, uh, like hundreds of cards there, all the same size and, shy, uh, size and shape. And uh, yeah. for a person to visually find one is uh, it just takes time and it's also tiring. And also it's uh, about uh, uh, about plus six uh, Celsius. Yeah, uh, there. Yeah. yeah. So not really comfortable. Yeah, and now so with the uh, it's like a average summer day in Norway, <laughs> plus six Celsius. No, no, it ain't that bad. Okay, yeah, it's cold. Yeah, cold. so it's just cold, yeah. uncomfortable. Yeah, but, but uh, yeah, yeah, uncomfortable. Yeah, and uh, and so uh, what the uh, what they can do now is they can have on a smartphone or a tablet, see the uh, floor plan, see where all the cars are located, and find the right one. Yeah, in, in, in a matter in, in a matter of I don't know, second, uh, well, how much time it would take? Well, so instead of spending forty minutes to find it, they spend what? They, I don't know. Well, let's 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 say a minute tops. Right, it's a huge, huge improvement. Yeah, that's a huge one. Yeah. I mean, this is not it's not like ten percent. I mean, from forty minutes to one minute, and this is continuously, you know, day to day operations for them. That's an enormous. Yeah. Uh, enormous benefit right yeah and yeah that's yeah. fantastic yeah and that's to be, great to be realistic it's not like well 40, 40 minutes is like let's call it high season and if it's a, a let's say regular day uh when, well let's say it's not the any kind of uh holidays yeah or anything like that or celebrations so that could be 25 minutes yeah but still the, the savings yeah. are i mean are still unbelievable, huge unbelievable. i mean even if let's say it was 25 minutes before and then now it's 22 minutes that's a pretty damn good improvement for business for yeah. businesses right yeah. so but if, if we go from 25 minutes to you know about one minute to maybe two minutes that's that's uh that's not small saving that's a huge huge saving so, okay so any other um uses that you guys are seeing uh yeah yeah for uh, the, another case i think it would be interesting uh for listeners to to know is the case we had with uh, uh, 
uh, Mercedes-Benz uh, certified uh, center. And you see yeah. there the procedure uh, was, so there was a car arriving to the uh, service center. Then they had to do the, you know, the regular steps like look what's wrong, repair, war, clean it, etc., etc., etc. And then once it's finished, they actually had to do something with the car. And they were putting it in a special parking lot. Yeah, a special parking right. lot, yeah, where it was waiting for its owner. Once the owner arrived, there was a, uh, the, the car had to be delivered to the owner from this parking lot. So they had a special, let's say, a dedicated driver, yeah, if you would say, it's right. an employee who would go to this parking lot, find the right car, and deliver to the owner. So, and imagine, so, the, uh, so and that, that guy was spending like 30 minutes while searching for the right car, the right car, because it was filled all, all, all the, all, all, all black Mercedes Benzes, yeah. Uh, all black, right. this almost the same size, almost the same sh shape. Yeah, uh, I think. Yeah, in my yeah, and the only difference is the uh, car plate. So and he was right. actually searching for thirty minutes. Yeah, and of course, once we did the uh, the tracking platform, yeah, he was locating it in a matter of seconds again and delivering to the. I actually, I actually uh, recently delivered my car to to service at the Bosch uh, service, and it's just this is like a local. This is not a big place at all. Just like super local car repair car car repair place and but they had two locations uh you know quite near to each other like a couple of kilometer kilometers uh distance and yeah so but i i go and i you know go to pick up my car and i actually how is that uh, yeah they i go to pick up my car and they can't find my car and yeah you literally can't find it like you know it's like <laughs> I thought, did somebody steal it or what? I mean, it was just like a small parking lot. Like I could see all the cars outside, and the car was was gone. So yeah, they needed little location services by by um, uh, Navigin. You know, <laughs> they didn't have that. <laughs> yeah, we should give them a call, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, and uh, so uh, yeah, I think those would be like the major use cases, like. Uh, had. of course there are we also have many cases where we have to track specific assets like metal bars leathers uh ballots so uh, so those use cases they keep popping up for us and we keep uh, learning more about where else we can use this because you see the technology and the indoor position is not that mature as a uh, outdoor position or yeah uh, fleet tracking yeah in the outdoor environments so we still also keep we're still exploring with the customers and partners what we can do with it. Yeah, in the case and uh, graph metrics is actually a good example where we're actually learning what we else we can do with uh, other solution providers to actually deliver uh, something even more uh, I would say uh, useful useful to the client. So yeah, so you you talk about partners there because I think. Um what you're showing now is an example that you at the Navigin have created the the, the screen yeah. the floor plan and but you actually uh, deliver also the sort of the the software that takes as i understand it uh, different types of positioning gadgets yeah. let me call them that yeah, yeah. and uh, from different vendors and you you folk you um you create it into like one system is that could you explain that a little better than me yeah <laughs> <I'm struggling. laughs> uh, yeah so we since we have a strong research and development team of 15 people and we actually uh what we do is we work with many hardware providers we take their hardware we integrate them and we test it and since we did many many times we can actually now similar we can do a seamless positioning on uh, say in one part of your factory you know, Bluetooth slow energy or Bluetooth, yeah, then we have ultra wide band in the middle and then we have, uh, say, Wi-Fi uh, 6 positioning where, or, uh, method yeah, as well. And, th and that's all connected seamlessly and moreover, we can actually give this data to, say, if our partner already has some kind of a platform in place and they would like to develop their own front, their front for this platform, what we can do is basically deliver them, be this layer, yeah, which processes all the incoming signals or all the positioning data and sends them the clean coordinates. 
that uh, cool. that's something we have to do as well and we're actually we're doing it. that's great and i have one question the indoor navigation and the positioning how do you have like integrations of those or are they completely separate well uh no they are they actually using the same engine okay mm -hmm. so uh yeah so for instance yes the tracking platform is using the very same cms that indoor navigation is using so what i mean by cms is uh where you upload your map you draw you add zones notifications points of interest all that is done the CMS and later that's uh, that is uh, that syncs up with the SDK and with the tracking platform. Okay. Anything else you want to share with us that I didn't ask or you know didn't know know to ask? Something interesting, cool that you guys are working on? Yeah. One more important thing that I think is worth mentioning is that for for young researchers uh, somehow interested in indoor navigation or indoor positioning. Yeah, Navigin is running an open source initiative uh, where they can access our SDK and try to build something on top of it and also communicate with our, not only our IT engineers, but also our, our uh, CEO. Uh, and yes, so, try to build something on top. And it's completely free for them. So, it's so if they want to do that, where, where do they reach you for that? Uh, they, they go to GitHub uh, and then they just have Navigin SDK or just Navigin. They'll still find the SDK and they can to try to do something. Yeah, uh, it's uh, yeah something that we are doing. We think that it would be cool to raise a generation of uh, uh, opposition geeks uh, working with an energy as the case. <laughs> yeah, okay. And for other companies that are interested in in um, contacting you for uh, maybe implementing some of this at their own warehouse, shopping mall, hospital, uh, how, how do they contact you? Uh, I'm available on LinkedIn and uh, LinkedIn most of the time. However, yeah. I think, uh, yeah, LinkedIn would be the best way. Okay. Yeah. So we'll, po LinkedIn. we'll post, we'll post, uh, if that's all right, I'll post your LinkedIn cred credentials or URL. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Of course. Thank you. Uh, yeah. The, the, I think those are the most important parts. I, I think it's, uh, uh, I would like to personally thank Kai for his time and for organizing that because, uh, uh, it says it's it's, uh, it's not like I do this quite often. However, talking with Kai uh, prior to this meeting regarding different opportunities, yeah, it's, it's still Kai can uh, really energize, gives you the energy and uh, desire to actually do this, and it's turned out to be uh, pretty awesome. And again, Kai. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank so, you. so and okay, so let's do what those YouTubers do. You know, make sure you you push the like or whatever we do on LinkedIn or. You know, and even having uh, now, I, I guess also if, if uh, Nick, if um, when we post this, if people have specific questions to you, uh, they can post it and, and I'm sure you can go and, and read the comment and respond sure. uh, if, if you're sure. if you can. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Nick Rozaev yeah. uh, from Navigin. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, I think uh, your your technology is awesome, and uh, you know we'll we'll do more and more. I'm sure it'll just be more and more of, of that technology, and we will learn better and better how to uh, benefit from it as an industry. Uh, you know, in the and it goes across industries. Um, so super excited to to see where you go and maybe where we go together. So thank you very much, Nick. Thank you, guys.